All right, welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by the Topoco Lodge. Today and tomorrow are river release days on the Chiowa River, just across the North Carolina border where the Topoco Lodge sits. Perfect time to drive up and visit the lodge just 60 miles away from Knoxville. Grab a bite or a beverage right there at the Topoco Tavern. They got decks and patios right by the rapids. And these river release weekends, that water is really pouring through there. It's a cool place to go. If you never checked it out, check it out today, tomorrow, the Topoco Lodge, topoco.com to learn more. Okay, uh, we kind of finished up uh, talking about comparisons. And I had a lot of people this week tell me on, on social media on Friday, and when everybody's mad, they were still out there angry on Saturday, but it was the talk of, uh, this guy's horrible, get rid of him. And I thought, well, would you trade him for Wade Houston? No. <laughs> would you trade him for Kevin O'Neill? No. Buzz Peterson, Jerry Green? No. No. Uh, Donnie Tindall, Conzo Martin? No. No. Bruce Pearl? You'd have some people that would say yes, and that made me think, well, let's do this perspective thing. Because people just look at it, you're focused on your own team. We suck. And you're thinking, well, Bruce is beating him. Bruce is doing a great job at Auburn. Let's compare the two. Pearl has been seven years at Auburn. Barnes has been six years at Tennessee. Barnes has the better overall record. Barnes has the better SEC record, easily. Barnes has been to more NCAA tournaments. Barnes has been to the same number of Sweet 16s. Barnes and, Burl and Pearl both have one SEC title that they tied for. The difference is Pearl has the one run to the Final Four, and he won an SEC tournament where he beat Barnes in the final. That's the difference. So this idea that, well, Pearl's tearing it up down there. He's been to two tournaments in seven years, and this year he's dealing with the NCAA, which is why he couldn't go to the tournament. So when you step back and look at it, who would you trade Barnes for? Nobody on that list that I just want. You go back 30 <laughs> years. So I had somebody else that, that tweeted and said, what are the chances of getting Steve Forbes to replace him? And I thought, look, I like Steve Forbes. You worked with Steve mm -hmm. Forbes. I wouldn't mind seeing Steve Forbes, depending on how his career goes, replacing Rick Barnes when Rick Barnes retires. But if your goal is Barnes can't win in the tournament, so let's replace him with a guy who's never won a tournament game. I don't see the logic there. I kind of miss it. Yeah. So uh, I just, <laughs> to me, it's a little silly. But here, here's what I wanted to get that out there. Here's my question. I'll start with you, Mark. What's your expectation, not for fans, if you're the administration at Tennessee and you are paying Rick Barnes over the next three years, his salary is going to be 5.2 up to 5.7 million, not including bonuses. What are, you, what are your expectations for him? What do you want him to do with that program making that kind of money? Uh, if you, to me, it's just it really, it's because I think football has to get right and we can't forget about that component of it. That's got to be the priority of the South Lake Department because all things go as football goes. I think they're just competing for SEC championships. I think if they are competing for SEC championships, Barnes is going to be here throughout that contract. They're not going to get rid of him. They're not going to have the buyout. They're just no, no, not going to do but it. But I'm saying, what would you, that's what you would say it, though. I know we, we've already established he, he's here. Only the, 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 the crazy folks think they would fire him. But what would you set his, as the, look, don't disappoint me. We're paying you this, at least do this. So you're saying compete for titles. Yeah, so what, what I'm saying finish in the, in, the, in the top three to four of the SEC consistently. So you're with, with Kentucky, with Florida, with uh, Will Wade, because he's going to keep buying them and get, being up there. <laughs> I mean, Alabama, Arkansas, I mean, they're, yeah. they're there. They're, so I think if you're competing in that top of the four um, of the SEC, that's going to put you in a good spot for the NCAA, which then means you're competing for Sweet 16s yeah. every year. Well, they would, I mean, if, you, if this were the old system, Tennessee would have won the East this year. If you, isn't that, they were the top team in the East if you kept that same goofy system, which I'm glad they got rid of. Did I get a ring for that? That gives a different perspective. <laughs> Gentlemen, <laughs> what would you, if you're the administration, let's say you're Randy Boyd and you rolled everybody together. <laughs> you're the ones that, that saved him, saved, kept his job here. You went mm -hmm. and got, not saved him, but saved Tennessee when he was trying to leave. You went and got the money together. What are you telling him, all right, I did this for you. Here's what I want to see over the next X years. Well, top four would be one of them that Mark pointed out. The other thing is I would expect you to get to the Sweet 16 two out of three years, and then I would expect you uh, to um, well, stay out of trouble, too, from the NCAA, yeah. Which, yeah. He, which, is, which he's done a pretty good job of. But it, at some point, I'd like to see you make a run that's deeper than the Sweet 16. I can't fire you if you don't, if you're doing the other things. But if you're in the top four, top 25 of the nation, and making sweet 16s every other year, every two, two out of three years, that's what I'd expect. Chuck, five years, I want to win an SEC title. 
I mean, I, you know, whether it's tournament, regular season, preferred tournament, uh, I think that carries more weight. The best this program done, has done is to get to the Elite Eight. Can we do better than that? Can you take us to a Final Four? That's what I want to see in five years. I think see, that, that, that's the point, though, of, like, the best ever is an Elite Eight. And now if we have the expectations for someone to keep their job of, of you consistent, you have to do better than that. Like, to the, be the best ever, like, that's not – well, he's getting it, paid the best ever. No, he, well, see, you go. That's what but I was no, talking but about. But the flip side <laughs> of that is, but, but the yeah. flip side of that is, who are you gonna get? Oh, I'm and not. Then you gotta I'm out, and then you got to try out. Like, who? <laughs> there's so much more to it than just being able to say, "All right, you, you, Barnes is not." I mean, even two Sweet Sixteens in three years. I don't know how many programs consistently do that, but that's stinking hard. That that's not easy. You what do you like know? It's not, it's not like you were a player but, and a coach. <laughs> and, but I'm just saying. From I get the five million piece of it, but yeah. it's it's if you get rid of them, there's money cost to it, and then who are you going to get? But, and here's the reality of that. Let's say Rick Barnes had the same season, and his salary this year was ten dollars. Wouldn't change one level of anger in East Tennessee. Not one fan's view would be impacted. The barking would simply be. It's so what we get for being cheap. <laughs> that it would not change a thing. So all of the, well, he's making this. You have to do. That. It'd still be furious if he was making ten dollars. <laughs> it would just be that UT is cheap. Um, I, I, the trick though is goal versus expectation. People confuse those two. Yeah. Your goal is to get to a Final Four. Right. Expectation at a school that's never been to one. And you're you're silly if you make that your expectation. That's not how it works. And for anybody saying that's where you get there. How many of you would apply that to your life and your <laughs> job? That would be zero. The I want the best expectation on me possible. No, you don't. You don't want your, hey, boss, I want you to be <laughs> as tough on me as possible. Nobody would do that to themselves. When we come back, three quick hitters on this Tennessee basketball season, and they're good, including is this the most disappointing season in the last 50 years. We'll show you the, 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 what the competition is. Come on back.